<laughs> oh, you are the best. So, I understand uh, also another thing. Alexander, don't you? That uh, this is uh, an audience uh, that uh, has uh, a high cultural level. <laughs> audience that uh, probably don't like uh, easy songs like the songs uh, that uh, I play. So I want to put, put over the asticella. The bar. The bar. And I want to stop to play music. I think that now is the moment to read a book. Here there are a lot of books, but are in, uh, in Polish, and it is difficult for me. Also in English is difficult, but is less difficult. So I know that you prefer this kind of uh, situation because I we are in a place where there are a lot of books, and so now I want for you read The Great Gatsby of Francis Scott Fitzgerald. All the book from the first page to the last. So I start. In my younger and more vulnerable years, my father gave me some advice that I have been turning over in my mind ever since. Whenever you feel like criticizing anyone, he told me, just remember that all the people in this world haven't had the advantages that you've had. He didn't say anymore, but we have always been unusually communicative in a reserved way, and I understood that he meant a great deal more than that. In consequence, I'm inclined to reserve all judgments, a habit that has opened up many curious natures to me and also made me victim of not a few bad luck bars. <coughs> the abnormal mind is quick to detect and attach itself to this quality when it appears in a normal person. And so it came about that in college I was unjustly accused of being a politician because I was privy to the secret griefs of wild unknown men. Most of the confidences were unsought. Frequently I have feigned sleep, preoccupation or hostile levity when I released by some unmistakable sign that an intimate revelation was quivering on the horizon. For the intimate revelation of young men, or at least the terms in which they express them, are usually plagiaristic and married by obvious separations. Reserving judgments is a matter of infinite open. I am still a little afraid of missing something if I forget that, as my father snobbishly suggests, and I snobbishly repeat, a sense of the fundamental, the senses, is parceled on equally at birth. And after boasting this way of my tolerance, I come to the admission that it has a limit. Conduct may be founded on the hard rock or the wet marshes, but after uh, a certain point, I don't care what is founded on. When I came back from the East last autumn, I felt that I wanted the world to the be in uniform and at a sort of moral attention forever. I wanted no more Ritu's excursion with privileged glimpses into the human art. Only Gatsby, the man who gives his name to this book, has exempted from my creation. Gatsby, who represented everything for which I have an unaffected scorn. If personality is an unbroken series of sexual gestures, 
Then there was something gorgeous about him, some heightened sensitivity to the promises of life, as if he were related to one of those intricate machines that register earthquakes 10,000 miles away. This responsiveness had nothing to do with that flabby impressionability, which is dignified under the name of the creative temperament. It was an extraordinary gift for hope. Romantic readiness, such as I have never found in any other person that which it is not likely I shall ever find again. No, Gatsby turned out all right at the end. It is what preed on Gatsby, what fool thus floated in the wake of his dreams that temporarily closed out my interest in the abortive sorrow and the short-winded election of man. <laughs> my family have been prominent, well, to do people in this middle western city for three generations. The Caroways are something of a clan, and we have tradition that we are descended from the Dukes of Bucklock. But the actual founder of my line was my grandfather's brother, who came here in 51, sent a substitute to the Civil War, and started the wholesale hardware business that my father carries on today. I never saw this great uncle, uh, but I'm supposed to look like him, with special references to the Rater art boiled painting that hangs in father's office. I graduated from New Haven in 1915, just a quarter of a century after my father, and a little later I participated in the delayed Teutonic migration known as the Great War. I enjoyed the counter raid so truly that I came back restless. Instead of being the warm center of the world, the Middle West did not seem like the rigid edge of the universe. So I decided to go east and learn the bond business. Everybody I know was the bond business, so I supposed uh, all my aunts and uncles take it over as if they were choosing a prep school for me, and finally said, why yes, with a very grave, hesitant faces. <coughs> Father agreed to finance me for a year, and after various delays, I came east permanently I threw it in the spring of 22. Her husband, among various uh, physical accomplishments, had been one of the most powerful ants that ever played football at New Haven. A national figure, in a way, one of those men who reached such an acute limited excellence at 21 that everything afterwards severed of anticlimax. His family were enormously earthly. Even in college, his freedom with money was a matter for reproach. But now he uh, had left uh, Chicago and come east in a fashion that rather took you breath away. For instance, it broke down a string of polo ponies from Lake uh, Forest. It was hard to realize that a man in my own generation has wetly enough to do what well, that. Why they came east, I don't know. Are you tired? <laughs> we live in a democracy. Do you prefer that I continue to read the, the book on the do you prefer to listen an album? Listen, yes. Who is for the book? <laughs> Nothing. Cri, 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 cri. Who is for the album? album. Yeah. I don't understand. Who is for the book? Yeah. Who is for the album? Yeah. Yeah. 
I don't hear Who is for the album? So, uh, put up the volume. I want that people listen to the album. It's better. Okay. Why they came is, I don't know. They had spent a year in France for no particular reason, and then drifted here and there unrestfully wherever people played polo and were rich together. This was a permanent move, said Daisy over the telephone. Okay, people. But I didn't believe it. Come on to I listen to... some music about Porfirio Ruby Rosa. So, I want to play for you my most famous song in Italy. A song 